<laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. And welcome to our third celebration of the fifth book in the Unheralded Artists of BC series, The Life and Art of Ina D.D. Utah by Christina Johnson. Mm. Yeah. Some say Utah, some say Utah. They say Utah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we had one launch, a big launch in Victoria at the Martin Bachelor Gallery, which was amazing. Then we had a second launch last, last week at the Petley Jones Gallery, and this is our third. The Unheralded Artists of BC is a series Mother Tongue Publishing started in 2008, illustrating and illuminating the lives and art of previously undocumented artists of the 1900s to 1960s in British Columbia. Ina D.D. Utoff was a single mother, artist, art educator, and key dynamo of the Victoria art scene from the moment she arrived in Victoria in 1925 until 1971, where she died. The commodification of fame has unconsciously relegated many forgotten and important historical artists to the back room, the attic, the family photo album, or the deep and musty archives of public libraries and thrift shops. The history of our artists is not taught in schools and very rarely in universities or colleges. There were thousands of artists working in BC in the first half of the last century and this series aims with scholarly research, good narrative writing, and beautiful illustrations to introduce you to a few of those artists. This spring, our fourth book, The Life and Art of Mildred Valley Thornton, was shortlisted for the Roderick Hay Brown Nonfiction Prize, and we were thrilled. And I think I as well will be making its way up there, I hope. <laughs> As Max Wyman, one of Canada's leading cultural commentators, wrote in his introduction to the third book, the spirit of generosity and inclusiveness is what animates this ambitious series designed to shine a lasting light on the legacy of artists whose work, for one reason or another, has been left largely invisible. Working with Christina on this manuscript has been an amazing experience. She originally started work researching two women, Ina Utoff and Edith Hamroth Schleicher, but she brought forward so much incredible research material that I decided to give each woman artist their own book. So today we celebrate Ina Utoff's life and art, and next June we will celebrate the life and art of Edith Hamroth Schleicher, good friend and sketching partner of Emily Carr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Along with Christina, there are many people to thank for this book. Ina's two granddaughters, Nancy White and Fiona Hurt, who flew to Victoria from the States for the Victoria launch. Michael Utoff, Ina's grandson, who lives in the Victoria area. Pat Martin Bates, who wrote a wonderful, warm introduction to the book. Ina was her mentor. Judith Brand for editing all the books in our series and a special thank you to Janet Dwyer of Salt Spring, who is one of our amazing photographers of art in the series. Janet, yay! challenges for this one. Born and raised in San Francisco Bay Area, Christina Johnson Dean graduated from the University of California, Berkeley, with a BA, History, Art before earning a professional teacher certificate in teaching in public school. After traveling around the world, she returned to live near her sister and family in Canada. At the University of Victoria, she completed an MA, History and Art, worked as a teaching assistant for the department, and created courses on local art history for continuing studies. Her publications include The Crease Family, a record of settlement and service in British Columbia, 1981, and BC Women Artists, 1885 to 1920. She teaches in the Greater Victoria School District, and her and her husband, Robert Dean, have two daughters. I warmly welcome Christine.
Thank you to my husband and Peter who set up all this technology. I couldn't do it. And, um, and thank you to Mona. It's been a delight being part of the Unheralded Artists in BC. Um, you know, we take this little bit of Victoria history and uh, I think as you uh, hear about it and you read about it, you'll see that uh, by looking at something in detail, like some of the paintings around here, you understand something much greater about the world. Uh, so, who was Ina Didi Utah? I'm just really going to highlight three things. First of all, she was a Scot, or as her daughter Muriel said, from beginning to end, a Scottish woman. And before you leave here tonight, I hope you will try her uh, Scottish shortbread. I made it for you, and I have her original recipe there, with a picture of her as a hiker. Uh, so, uh, she was born, actually, Jemima Duncan Dewar Campbell uh, in 1889 at Arabank Villa, west of Glasgow, uh, and across the Firth of Clyde. She was named after her mother, Jemima Dewar, who in 1870 married John Blackwell Campbell, a commission agent supplying ships. We don't have too much you can imagine about that family. Looking up John Campbell in Scotland. It's too low. Uh, I know, of course, was probably a she name to, to distinguish her from her mother. She was, one of the characteristics we do know about her as a uh, young person, she was excellent at fly fishing, a skill she learned as a young girl from her brother Alex. She used to spend a great deal of her girlhood days uh, with him, flashing around on the moors and trying to catch fish. Um, this is probably one of the earliest uh, photographs we have of her. I think she's probably in a school uniform with a midi. Um, now, let's see. I, can... I did have this going. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, this is uh, one of her early drawings. It's a self-portrait. She was a student at the Glasgow School of Art from 1906 to 1913, uh, emphasizing drawing and painting. Um, but she became a competent, uh, she became competent with portraits, landscapes, all sorts of printmaking, a variety of commercial artists, and like Emily Carr, trying to make a living in, Berk, um, in uh, Victoria, she did uh, pottery and metalwork and leatherwork and just about anything. Not rug hunting, though, or sheepdog raising. Um, uh, the school that she went to, the Glasgow School of Art, was designed by Charles Rennie Mackintosh, who, along with his wife, Margaret MacDonald, contributed to a really vibrant art community with designs associated with the arts and crafts movement and the Art Nouveau movements. Uh, Ina reported later that she had a grand time there. Now, am I doing this the right? A little more distance to yeah. not used to this. Not too close. <laughs> Is that too close? No, okay. Too. okay, you can. So um, she. This is a, a print she did. Well, it sort of shows more of her commercial art uh, leaning. Uh, in addition to the art, she also trained uh, as a teacher in Glasgow. Uh, in her recollections, she wrote, "The work at the public schools was very heavy." The chief hurdle being able to preserve discipline as a minimum 60 hefty teenage boys composed each of the eight classes that comprised my daily program. Clearly there was no union. She determined that she needed to stand on her own, so she wrote later, so the only way in which I could tackle a job uh, like this was to win the interest and cooperation of my classes. The strap was commonly used. But she, when she really thought of hitting those often surly youths, I inwardly quailed. She was only in her 20s at the time. She cringed at the idea of missing the target, that small area of bare skin on the palm of the hand. But she knew if she were accurate, it would establish her authority as a disciplinarian. She recalled her first use of the strap and its effect. She wrote later. Somewhat to my surprise, it worked. The boys became interested in drawing and painting, and from then on there was more cooperation, but even now I break into a cold sweat when I think of what would probably have happened had I missed my aim. Anyway, she got very good references. 
competent and effective teacher, maintain discipline and order, and somewhat rare in a young teacher. She was an, she is an expert in her subject and would be a valuable member to any school. Uh, in Glasgow, she certainly appreciated the urban 